Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today I'm here for my 25th and final episode of my series, Rink It All, and it's going to be for All That Remains, and All That Remains is a band I've been into for about two or three years now, and I think the first song I ever heard from these guys was either the song Two Weeks or the song Madness, and this band is pretty good. They do have some weaker albums in their discography. But overall, I still think they're a really good band. So, yeah. Other than that, though, let's go and get started with this ranking. Okay, so number nine is Madness. This album came out in 2017. And yeah, this album isn't the worst thing in the world, but... It's definitely All That Remains' his weakest album and worst album in my opinion now. I don't hate this album. I just don't like it. And the title track is just too radio friendly. Don't care for it. I used to like the title track, but I learned that, that that's not even a really good song. It just It's just basically a hard rock attempt to be Nickelback, basically. And nothing against Nickelback, but all that remains trying to go to that route just didn't fucking work. So, yeah, this album sucks. There's nothing else to really say about it. So, yeah, let's go and move on to number eight. Okay, so number eight is The Order of Things from 2015. This is their second weakest album. And I do think it's better than... Madness, of course, not much better, but just a little bit better. And yeah, I like some songs from this album. Sure, it's not one of their best albums, and a lot of people seem to just not like this album, and I can definitely understand that because I don't really care for it much myself, but I did enjoy some songs off of it, such as the opening track, This Probably Won't End Well, No Knock was a good song. I did even enjoy true cult metal that was a good one i liked the greatest generation that was a good song pernicious was pretty good and the song criticism and self-realization so there's some decent songs on this album the order of things but it's still not one of their best albums but it does have some good songs and a huge complaint for a lot of people with this album is that they basically said they transcended metal when I don't think they did at all. I can get where Phil Levante is coming from, but yeah, that's just a stupid claim to make. But yeah, they didn't transcend shit with this album because it's not even a good album. It's just average at best. So yeah, other than that though, let's go ahead and move on to number seven. Number seven is A War... You Cannot Win, this is from 2012, and this album is a little bit better than The Order of Things, and many people would say that this is where All That Remains went downhill and started making more radio-friendly types of songs instead of their traditional, instead of their traditional metalcore type of music, and I definitely agree with that because there's just... A lot of songs on this album that are just kind of light sounding or whatever you want to call it. Basically the hard rock stuff. Now you still got some really good songs on this album such as You Can't Feel My Shadow, A Call to Non-Believers, Just Moments in Time. I even like the ballad, What If I Was Nothing. A lot of people don't like that song but it's okay because I respect your opinion but... I still think it's a great song. And the song Sing for Liberty was really good. So, yeah, you still got some good songs on A War You Cannot Win, despite it not being one of their best albums. But I still do like this album, but I just don't think it's one of their best. Okay, number six is their debut album, Behind Silence and Solitude. And Behind Silence and Solitude came out in the year 2002. And yeah, I just didn't really care for this album much, but it is better than the first three albums that I mentioned in this ranking, of course. But yeah, this debut album has more of a melodic death metal sound. But 
it's still a pretty good album, but I just didn't really care for it much. But maybe one of these days it'll grow on me, but for now, if I had to narrow it down to my favorites on the album, those would be Clarity. Clarity is a great song, definitely one of the better songs on the album. I even enjoyed the title track, that was pretty good. Follow was a decent song, I didn't even liked the song One Belief, so... Yeah, it's still a decent album at best. That's how I'm just going to put it for their debut. Okay, number five. Now, I know the album I have, and at number five, some people have in the top three, which I think is fine with me, but it's not in my top three, but I still do think it's a really great album. And number five is their 2008 album, Overcome. Now, this might be a little controversial because... Some people would have it in the top three, but that's all right with me. But, yeah, I respect your opinion, of course. But, yeah, my favorites on Overcome would be Two Weeks, Shiren, Days Without, Do Not Obey, Relinquish, and Believe in Nothing. And now, some people probably would not like the cover Believing Nothing, but still think it's a great cover, and I really enjoy it. Sure, it's not their metalcore sound it's more like a hard rock cover because i think the band nevermore is some kind of metal band i'm not sure what genre they're labeled as but believing nothing is a cover of nevermore's song believing nothing but i still think all that remains done pretty good with this cover so i gotta give them props to that so yeah overcome despite it being number five in my ranking i still think it's a really great album okay Number four is their second studio album, This Darkened Heart. This album came out in 2004, and this one also had the melodic death metal style in their music instead of the metalcore, but yeah, man. This album is amazing. It has a lot of great riffing on this album, and I just really, really enjoy this album, but I just got to put it at number four. I really like this album and think it's one of the best. But yeah, despite it coming in at number four, I still think this Darkened Heart is definitely one of the best albums. No doubt about that. But yeah, I really love this album, and I'm even going to buy it on CD when I can. So yeah, man, I can't wait to get this album on CD because it's fucking amazing. It really is. But if I had to pick some favorites, those would be The Deepest Grey, Focus, Shall Not Fail, Regret Not, I know Regret Not is an instrumental, but I still really enjoyed that one. I normally don't put instrumentals as favorites, but I re really enjoyed this one. Also liked the song Tattered on My Sleeve, and the title track was really good. I mean, I enjoyed every song on the album, but I just had to knock down to some favorites. But either way, this Darkened Heart from 2004... Is definitely a great album and definitely one of their best. Okay, number three is Victim of the New Disease from 2018. This is their latest album until they release a new album whenever they'll do that. But, yep, Victim of the New Disease, great album. I know it's probably a little bit too high for certain people in my ranking, but remember, this is just my opinion, of course. But, yeah, this is a great album. I think it's one of their best. Is the first ever All That Remains album I ever bought on CD. So, yep, yeah, it's definitely a great first album for me. And yeah, I really like this album. I like all 10 tracks on it, but some of my favorites are the songs Fuck Love, Fuck Love opens up the album. It's really heavy and aggressive, and it's only like three minutes in length, but it's still worth the listen every time because. It's definitely a heavy way to begin the album. Everything's Wrong is more of a radio-friendly song, but I really love that one. It's one of my favorites on the album, no doubt about that. I really love Everything's Wrong. Definitely an underrated song because the music video on YouTube doesn't have many views, but I still think it's good. Great song. Wasteland was really good. And I even enjoyed the song they done with Danny Warsnop from Asking Alexandria called Just Tell Me Something. I think that was a great song. Another radio-friendly type song, but it's really good. I really enjoyed 
the vocals from Danny Warsnop. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Asking Alexandra these days, but I will admit that Danny done great on the song. And, yeah, he done really great singing the song, All That Remains. So, yeah, definitely going to give Danny props to that, though. So, yeah, other than that, though, Victim of the New Disease is definitely a return to form, if you want to say that, for All That Remains. Because, like I said earlier on in the ranking, they're a great band. They just have some weaker albums in their discography. But, yeah, this is definitely a great return to form. So yeah, definitely a great album. So let's go to move on to number two. Alright, so number two in my ranking is going to be For We Are Many. This is their 2010 album. And now, I know some people are not going to agree with me for having this in my top two. But I love this album from start to finish. It's got some lighter songs, but it's also got its heavier moments. It's mainly got heavier songs than it does lighter songs, but... Yeah, this album is fucking amazing. Definitely underrated. More people don't give it the credit that it deserves. But, yeah, I think this is one of their best albums once again. So, yeah, with this album, you got songs like the title track, which is a really heavy song. I know it's really short, but it's definitely heavy. You get some really good riffing with it and all that. So, that's definitely a plus for me. Great title track. I even like the song The Last Time. The Last Time is more of a radio-friendly song, but I still really enjoyed that one. Won't Go Quietly was a great song. I, I really like that one. Another one of my favorites on For We Are Many would be Aggressive Opposition. I really like that song. I also like the song Dead Wrong. That was a good one. I like the song Hold On. Hold On is another radio-friendly song, but I really enjoyed that one. Another one of my favorites on the album for We Are Many. Great song. And I even like the ballad, The Waiting One. Now, when it comes to their ballads, I don't mind them as long as they're not awful like one of the songs from their album, The Order of Things. But yeah, this song is better than any of the ballads on their 2015 album, The Order of Things. That's for damn sure. Because that album had too many ballads. Forgot to mention that when I mentioned the order of things. But yeah. For Way or Many, definitely one of my favorites. So it has been at number two. Definitely a great album, in my opinion. Alright, and number one. Number one is The Fall of Ideals from 2006. This may come as no surprise to you guys. Because a lot of people have this at number one. And I'm not just copying people. By putting this at number one, I think this is their best album. And I don't think they could ever top this album ever. No matter if they're going to be heavy again with their music. I don't think there was ever replacing The Fall of Ideals at the very top. But yeah, The Fall of Ideals, definitely a great album. Probably their heaviest album to date when it comes to the metalcore stuff. Because we already know... That after this album they went more toward the mainstream style of metalcore. But yeah, still a great band. But yeah, The Fall of Ideals takes the top spot for me. Because I really enjoyed this album. But if I had to knock down to some favorites, those would be This Calling, Not Alone, Six, The Air That I Breathe, and Empty Inside. But yeah, I do enjoy this whole album. But those are just some of my favorites on the album. So yeah, guys. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of my series, Rank It All. And it's been episode 25, and for the band, All That Remains. So yeah, guys, let me know some of your favorite All That Remains songs. Let me know how you would rank their discography from either worst to best or least favorite to favorite. So yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Thank you all for tuning in, and yeah, I'll see y'all later. Peace.